You want me to put that on my todger? Harry's wife. The entitlement of a celebrity. The talent of a nobody. Hello. I'm H.G. Tudor. Lesser and mid-range narcissists invariably squander what they are given. Their need to look at the moment results in them having so many problematic relationships, both with family, with friends, and in particular, intimate relationships. That's why so many of them end up with haphazard lives, in and out of jobs, in and out of relationships, falling out with family members, falling out with neighbours. Of course they don't care, because they're able to move on to new groups, then hoover people back in because they're too kind and too tolerant. But the fact is that the haphazard nature of the way that their narcissism functions is that it is entirely effective in always ensuring that control is obtained in some way, that they get the fuel that they need and so forth. But they will, repeatedly, end up cutting off their own noses to spite their faces. Greater narcissists than the ultra have far more talent and ability to look ahead, and therefore the problems that beset lesser and mid-range narcissists are not to be found there. The Times, in an article by Hadley Freeman, provides you with a clear example of how a narcissist can start off in a winning position and then put themselves in a shitty one. The article's entitled, Harry's Wife Had an Ocean of Goodwill and Drained It. Has anyone ever squandered more goodwill and more quickly than the Duchess of Sussex? It's hard to remember. Now that her UK popularity rating, according to YouGov, is minus 47, her and Prince Harry's eight-figure deals with Netflix and Spotify are in the bin and she was publicly trashed last week by the chief executive of a Hollywood agency as not a great audio talent or necessarily any talent. Pausing there, I should imagine that come the day that Harry's wife shuttles off this mortal coil, some wag might go and chisel onto her tombstone, or headstone rather, not a great audio talent or necessarily any talent. And then beneath she's buried in her Y-shaped coffin. But not very long ago, most people really, really, really liked Harry's wife. Might be overstating it somewhat, but let's find out more. And it seems to be difficult for her to recall this, given her apparent antipathy to Britain. But people really, really, really liked her here. Almost exactly five years ago, I was dispatched to Windsor to cover Harry and Harry's wife's wedding, the author writes. No one goes to a royal wedding to find republicanism, but the feelings of delight about this particular royal couple were overwhelming, infectious even. Well, the author was there, moving amongst the people. After all the political turmoil in the US and UK, there was genuine joy at seeing Prince Charles, of all unlikely harbingers of the future, walking a mixed-race American woman up the aisle to marry his son. And not just from the usual elderly royalists. I got the train back to London afterwards with a group of black British teenagers, all of whom had come specifically to show support for Harry's wife. Royalists were happy that Harry was happy, and people who don't care about the royals liked his wife. Theirs was, it seemed, a no-lose union and an easy life of guaranteed global adulation seemed laid out in front of them, like a carpet of roses. Pausing there, that does seem to be a valid observation. And whilst, of course, there were people that had reservations about her, your glorious na narrator amongst them, having identified way before that what she was, and then publicly expressing the same around that time, there were, as the author reports, many people who were enthused about the union between the two and were very favourably disposed towards Harry's wife. Thus, huge amounts of goodwill, which to Harry's wife translates as lots of people being under control and providing positive fuel. The article continues, In the five years since the wedding, a whole industry of revisionist history has emerged in which... Famous women are re-evaluated, 
invariably more favorably than they were 20 or 30 years ago. Courtney Love wasn't crazy. She was cool. Monica Lewinsky wasn't a slut. She was exploited. Ditto Pamela Anderson, and so on. How strange, then, to be Harry's wife, and to find oneself re-evaluated so quickly and so negatively. Well, pausing there, it isn't actually a surprise. It's because people saw through her behaviour. The reason being is that her narcissism wasn't up to the job of keeping her in the position to which she clambered. The author continues, I can date the precise moment when my own sceptical opinion about her began to develop. November the 8th, 2020. Until that point, I described my feelings towards her as sympathetic, with undercurrents of narcissism. I defended her when her appalling father conducted his British media tour castigating her for not being nicer to him, smearing assertion of control by Thomas Markle. I liked that she was, hey, like me, an American woman with a British husband, and I kidded myself I could imagine how it felt to be the object of so much hysterical media attention so suddenly. I cheered when she and Harry did their flit from the royal family. Save yourself from having to spend another Christmas in freezing Balmoral, Harry's wife. Go live your best life in sunny California. But on November the 8th, 2020, as the world was still in the depths of COVID, I got a glimpse of what Harry's wife's best life was when she and her husband staged a photo shoot at the Los Angeles National Cemetery. See parts passing for analysis about that. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex, their spokesman explained, wanted to be able to personally recognise Remembrance Day in their own way. Just a little intimate gesture between the two of them, the dead soldiers, and the global media. I couldn't blame Harry for the gauchness because he knew of no other way to live. But Harry's wife, come on, man, I thought, what are you doing? simulating sad face in front of a photographer now that you finally escaped the cage. You had three and a bit decades before you became famous. Don't you want to go back to a normal life? Isn't that why you left the royal family? Everything she has done since then has proven that no, she absolutely does not want a normal life. From fighting to keep her children's royal titles character trait acquisition, to releasing ludicrous statements about a car chase in New York that never happened, revision of history, lie, it is seemingly clear that what Harry's wife actually wants is to be a celebrity. Indeed, she does, because that caters to the prime aims more effectively for her. Far from providing her hapless husband with the normality many of us thought they both craved, it looked in their Netflix documentary like she encouraged his sense of grievance and paranoia correct, frequently pointing out slights from outsiders and invisible paparazzi, triangulation. Her heyday coincided with weird moments, a weird moment in social justice when identity politics became a source of grievance, hawking and self-promotion. And there are few better examples of that than Archetypes, the one programme the couple made for Spotify. In this, Harry's wife promised to investigate dissect and subvert the labels that hold women back without any sense of irony given how much her own success exceeded her talents. The more she talked, the harder it became to defend her as she complained about the smallness of her freebie home and wafted on about her truth. No one would argue that the royal family is a beacon of racial progressiveness, but her repeated implication that Britain is more riddled with racism than the US doesn't feel like anyone else's truth except hers. The Spotify executive, Bill Simmons, recently described Harry and Harry's wife as grifters, but that's not quite right. Harry is a hothouse royal who is learning too late that he has nothing to offer the world but his royalty. Harry's wife is a product of her own era, in that she has the entitlement of a celebrity, but the talents of a nobody. Other people with such attributes will go into reality TV or influencing. The great irony of Harry's wife's life is that, against all odds, she found her way to the royals, the perfect pedestal for a narcissist. The great tragedy is, she believed she could do better and walked away. Well, that's her narcissism at play. The best she can hope for 
is that her truth blinds her to the reality of how wrong she was. And I can tell you, Hadley Freeman, it certainly does. Quick dive below the line to see what observations were in relation to that. Martin Delaney, an excellent article about these two talentless grifters. M. Drummond, the absolute low point was her wicked, cruel and unfunny interview where she imitated a sarcastic curtsy to the Queen while sitting beside her hapless husband. It showed a total lack of respect or kindness. Raw narcissism. He said nothing. Forced to smirk beside her. It was doubly despicable. This was his grandmother she was mocking. S. Muench adds, worse yet, they filmed it when QE2 was still alive and fully expected her to see it. This is abominable, crude, trashy behaviour. Melissa Martin, the being photographed at Uvalde was the Nadir, announcing she was there in a private capacity, whilst knowing she would be filmed and representing no one but her brand. That disgusted me. Agnes Clark, it's just very sad that they have cut themselves off from family on both sides. Their children shall never know their cousins in the way the rest of us grew up with our cousins. Britain is probably the least racist society in the Western world, and they have made an awful mistake claiming that it is. They could have had a very nice, peaceful, and fulfilling life had they stayed. M. Birdman, oh come on Hadley, as another American woman a bit older and with experience of genuine feminism, I can only say if you really times three liked Harry's wife, you've lost all my respect. Don't bet on it, far too many of us always saw Harry's wife for what she is, a deservedly unknown, wannabe, untalented TV actress who never had what it took to get anywhere. She is not a scientist, author, singer, teacher, physician, just a bad actress until Prince Harry decided that this was the wife for him. What we mind is that while millions of women of real talent, commitment and courage don't even get paid parental leave in the United States, we have to hear that people liked Harry's wife just because Harry's does. We weren't fooled. Why were you? M. Joyce, so true. We rolled out the red carpet for her wedding and all were very accepting it was a good thing for the country and the royal family that Harry had selected a wife from a mixed race background. She quite literally had it all. In contrast to weighty Katie, what she had not grasped was that succession to the crown and it being more fixed than her being cast in several minor TV roles. The shock of finding out that she was not going to outrank all others was apparently too much to bear. Her narcissism again, of course. She turned Harry against his family, and that will eventually come home to roost. Foolish. Patricia Howell. Harry's wife looked smug on their wedding day. Harry looked bewildered. And so it continues, five years later. P. Mendel. The best she can hope for is that her truth blinds her to the reality of how wrong she was. Ouch. Ian Dilworth replies, Narcissistic people have no idea of their reality for others. That is part of the condition. Correct. Scathing comments, as usual, for Harry's wife, demonstrating that she really did squander things, that she threw it all away, and as a consequence of her narcissism. <laughs> 